All right, start from the first one. We'll be talking about the gamma. So this picture I mentioned to you in some other previous session about concept of the gamma, the kilesa, and the result of the action that we do, whether good or bad. Uh, the teaching of the Buddha, he teach us to understand the nature of life and the nature of human mind. In human mind, there are something called the kilesa, greed, hatred, delusion, ignorance. They are kept in the mind. Tanha also kept in the mind. And that's considered an unwholesome root cause of action. These three viruses of the mind cause us to do things unwholesomely or unskillfully. And that comes with the result. And that action is called the gamma. The gamma that we created, we can do or we can create the gamma in three ways. By thinking, by saying, and by doing. And whatever we do, whatever we think, whatever we say, it will yield the result. That's called the vipaka, or the result or the fruit of the action. There is nothing that gets lost in this universe. As long as we are human beings, that means we will be born with ignorant mind. Our mind still contains the defilements. And this journey seems to be a very long journey until someone has awakened to the truth and telling us that, hey, everyone, there is something called the defilement in your mind. And the defilement cause you to do bad thing, And that bad thing will yield the result. If you kill, you may born with short lived born handicapped or whatever it is. You know, if you drink a lot, you may born with the mental illness, attract all the bad things into your life. You know, if you give, you will attract well into your life. So this seems to be a generic teaching of the Buddha about the karma, where you may not find in other teaching or other doctrine in this world. So karma play the important role uh, in the teaching of the Buddha. And this circle, we need to keep in mind that there is the guy behind the scene that forced us to do the karma. And the karma that we do will be saved in our mind and it will yield the result in the future. But today we're going to talk about something that's considered a heavy karma. If someone break this law of karma, someone commit this heavy or the anantariya karma, so this karma will take effect first the moment that the person dies or even it happened right away when that person is still alive. There are many stories like this that uh, appears in the Buddhist text. Before we get to know what are those five things, let me give you some background information about the karma first. In one teaching, the Buddha mentioned about there are four things that nobody in this world, even the Buddha himself, can guarantee. First, no one can guarantee that someone liable to old age will not grow old. Someone who liable to sickness will not get sick. Someone who liable to death will not die. No one can guarantee that. The last one, no one can guarantee that the bad deeds done in the past life will not produce the result, corrupting, hurtful, resulting in suffering and future rebirth, old age and death. All of the bad things that we have done will be kept in our mind and it will produce the result. It will produce the result. That means it will happening definitely. Definitely. Unless you know the way out, then you can work around. There's always some way out, right? The Buddha also teach us how to do that. But in general, in general human being, if we do good and do bad, everything will be kept in the mind. A positive and negative power will be kept in the mind. It will wait until the right time to take effect or to take the result. And this is the significance of the karma mentioned by the Buddha himself. Beings, mean all of us, are owners of their action or karma. Sometimes we don't translate the word karma. Karma is a karma. But uh, just to keep it simple, uh, it's, sometimes it's also nice to hear the translation in English, right? But if you study more of the Buddhist text from many Buddhist scholars, they don't translate it. They just stick with the word karma. They just stick with the word dharma. Because uh, the more we translate it, the more the meaning gets changed. Okay? It's not the real meaning of the word karma. The heir to their action, they originate from their action. Originate from their action. They are bound to their action. They have the action as their refuge. It is action or karma that distinguish being as inferior or superior. This gives us the hints why we will create differently. We don't have to blame super being or blame the nature of, or anything. 
we are in charge of our own life. We can be the master of our own destiny. If you look at yourself today, whatever happened to you, your health, your relationship, your education, you name it. This is the picture of your previous life. The goodness that you have been accumulated, it becomes you today. It attracts everything to you today. And look at your friends or people around you. Some people don't even have house to stay. They are homeless. They don't even have food to eat. They don't have place to stay. They have no education. Why the nature create them like that? Who should we blame? Or we shouldn't be blame anybody? That's something we should be thinking about it. So Buddhism teach about the cause and effect. It's always the cause and effect. There's nothing happened by accident. So we need to keep that information in mind. The word karma mean mean a lot of things to the teaching of the Buddha. That means this lifetime is not the first lifetime that we were born. And it's definitely not the last lifetime either. We're going to have to keep reborn and reborn and reborn for a countless lifetime until we can remove the tanha or the ignorance or the defilement out of our mind completely. When that happens, we will experience something called Nibbana. In other words, every lifetime that we were born, okay, in the future lifetime, we have one main duty, I believe, to purify ourselves, body, speech, and mind, to lessen the power of defilement. We may not be able to remove them completely in this life, in next life, or in the next five life, ten life in the future. But as long as we have this right view about life, we have this principle, we understand that this is life, this is the nature of life, there's something called defilements, and as long as the defilements still within us, we're going to have to keep reborn for a very long, long time. So if we wake up to this truth, then we should set the new attitude that every day that we wake up, whatever we will be doing today, we will make sure that we will find a way to lessen the power of the defilement from our mind. Start from something simple, observing precept, you know, donation, meditation, study Dharma. There are many good things that you can do to work around that area, to purify yourself on a daily basis. As a Buddhist monk, there's one teaching that I learned from my teacher, and I still use it every day. It's important for us to remind ourselves before we go to bed. He said, if today, before you go to bed, can you bow to your own feet? If you cannot bow to your own feet, that means something is wrong today with your practice, with your Dhamma practice. You may break some precept. Do something about it. Get it fixed. Tomorrow, reset again. Be mindful how to live your life. Then if you can go to bed with that happy feeling, happy mind, you think of your own action today, you feel very joyful before you go to bed. You can bow to your own feet. That day is considered a success day. If today something went wrong, it's okay. We are human beings. We are ignorant beings. We make mistakes all the time. And mistake is the part of the game of life. The most important question is, what should we do next after we make a mistake? And today, this topic is very serious. And I, I never found uh, this kind of teaching anywhere else about Anantariya Kama. It's called a heavy Kama. There are five things. But before we take a look at them, this is something that I'd like to share with you. We involve with Kama. Every day when we wake up, we create Kama. Good, bad, not good, not bad. Every single day until the day we die. If you are fortunate, you understand the law of karma, then you can prepare yourself and save yourself from, you know, uh, accumulate the negative karma. And this is what happened before a man die. It's, consider, it's called the gravity of karma. The karma will take effect in this, um, uh, uh, in this process. The first one is called weight or heavy karma or karu karma. Karu means heavy. It's called karu karma. Something heavy, which we will be talking today. Okay, Today you will know what are those five things that nobody should be doing it. It's very serious through the lens of the Buddha and the awakened being. And second, if you don't do the first one, the first kind of karma or karu karma, the second karma will take effect the moment that the man dies. We call death proximate or asana karma. Asana karma is the karma that takes uh, effect the moment that a man about to die, in the dying moment. In the dying moment, if the mind cling on something good, 
think of the good deed that a person has done. Oh, maybe I ordained before. You know, I build a temple. I release the fish. I study dharma. If the mind cling on that positive action or the karma, good karma that he did in that very moment that the 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 guy about to die, in this case he has a chance to go to a good place. But oppositely, if his mind all of a sudden cling on something negative, the bad thing that he has done, in just one second the mind turn from bright to darkness, and when the mind cling on or attach to the darkness for some reason. The person, or that mind, or that spirit, most likely will go to the bad place or the unhappy realm. And this is an important wisdom that everyone must keep in mind. That taught by the Buddha, that warn is a warning from the Buddha. If you remember nothing in the teaching of the Buddha, make sure that you secure your mind at at your last breath. When the mind is defined, an unhappy destination may be expected. Oppositely, when the mind is undefined, a happy destination may be expected. Two things: this is bright, this is dark. So dark is bad. Bright is good. How is the condition of your mind today, toward bright or toward dark? How was the condition of your mind last night? If we go to bed tonight. We don't know whether we will wake up tomorrow or not. It is crucial for us to habituate the mind to sleep in the brightness. And how can one sleep in the brightness? You need to think of the good thing that you have done today, or the good thing that others have done to you today. Feel grateful about who you are and what you do today, and sleep in that happy moment. Do not sleep in the uh, agitated feeling, getting cranky, getting getting mad. About life, about problem at work, about relationship, about family. Do not do not habituate yourself to go to bed that way. Do opposite. This is something. It's one of the homework that most of the meditator should uh, do. This homework every day to sleep in a happy mind. And people may say, "Oh, you know what? I I know the principle. And before I die, I will direct my mind towards something good." But on a daily basis, I'm I'm just neglect to be mindful, to to do merit, to think of the good thing. It's not easy like that. It's not easy like that. If you are a regular meditator, you know what I mean. Some of you have been sitting five years, ten years. Do you think that you can sit every session and be able to control the mind, to have the mind stay still inside the body, in every session? It's not easy like that. Even though you are physically healthy. Your brain, your physical, your mind is in good shape. You still cannot control the mind to be still, or still cannot control the mind to only think of the good thing all the time in that particular session. So it's not an easy task at all. It sounds simple, but it's not easy. And that's the second thing. And the third one is called habitual karma or ajina karma, the karma that one habitually perform and recollect. This thing will take effect at the third level. Let's say a man wake up in the morning and offering food to the monk every day. He might feel like giving every day. He feel happy every time he give. Or a person observe five precepts every day when he think of his precept. They feel like, wow, this year, the year two thousand twenty four, I never break any precept. I observe precept every single day from January first until December thirty first. 365 days, perfectly, and when he think of his own behavior like that, he feel proud of himself. He feel joyful, so he continue observe precept for the next year, and the next year until the day he die. So he habituate the mind to be that way, to feel joy and happy with his own precept, with his own action. This is something that you do every day. It's very meaningful. This is help. It's very helpful when the mind, when you think of. A man in the dying bed, he's losing. You know, there's no physical power. He's worried about the life after death and don't even know what to think. But if he have been doing something good routinely or regularly, that would help him to regain consciousness. That would help him to be joyful when he think of that thing. The in the subconscious level, the mind 
will continue to do what it gets used to do, even though in the conscious level, the body may not respond to the oxygen, to the tube, to the doctor, to the medical equipment. In the conscious level, it may not respond to that. But I believe in the subconscious level, the mind knows what it's supposed to be doing. There is an example that I learned from my teacher. He said one of the great teachers, he was a senior monk, and he admitted to the ICU. He lost conscious. He did not die. And every day at 5 p.m., the nurse and the doctor observed that every day at 5 p.m., when they check on the EKG and the brain uh, signal from the brain and signal from the heart, they see that during that time, that particular time between 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., that graph, that curve is getting excited. It's getting up and down very fast, very quickly from 5 to 6 p.m. And after that, it becomes low again. And they didn't know why. They cannot figure it out. So they asked the attendant to that senior monk, what did this teacher do during this time? And the secretary said, oh, every time, every day, if he did not have any invitation to go out, this time of the day is the time that he meditate and do the chanting. He ordained as a novice and died as a monk, as a senior monk. So that means he habituated his mind for whole life to do the chanting and meditate during this time every single day until the day he died. And that's, that's uh, the power of the subconscious mind. We habituate the mind to do this, to welcome this positive energy to our life during that time every single day. Okay, so please do not overlook the importance of the word habit. If you meditate every day, 5 o'clock in the morning, that means every day at 5 o'clock, whether you wake up or not, your mind will be there waiting for you. It's know where to go and when to go according to how you train the mind. And number four is called katatta kam. Katatta kam means uh, accumulative kamma. The kamma that uh, not belong into the first three groups is called katatta kam. Something minor, something not so important, but still consider the kamma. There are five things we call anantariya kamma. This one is the first group. It's called a heavy kamma. If someone commit one of these, that person is in serious problem. First, killing martyrs. One's martyrs. Matu kata. Second, killing one's fathers. Pitu kata. And the third, killing arahan, or the enlightened being, called arahanta kata. And the number four, injuring the Buddha. Nobody can kill the Buddha, but can injure the Buddha. And it's happened in the Buddha time as well. It's called Lohitu Pabada. And the last one is called Sankha Beda, causing the Sankha, basically break the Sankha into, into two groups. Instead of unite, uniting them together, uh, the person try to separate them. This is called Sankha Peta. And number three and number four cannot be done, right? Because the Buddha is not around and the enlightenment or the Arahan may not be around. But number one, Number two and number five, there's a possibility. And this day, unbelievable. There are the news like this. Son kill fathers. Sons kill martyrs. Father kill son. Mother kill son. What's wrong with the world today? This is something that's considered extremely bad. Extremely bad. In Thailand, the land of Buddhism as well, there are news, news like this appears almost regularly happening in the families. Husband kill wife, wife kill husband, son kill fathers, fathers kill daughters. We don't know what went wrong today in the mind of human being. This is quite scary. And this is the world that we're living in today. So we need to uh, not only educate ourselves, perhaps one day we can educate the world around us as well than about the karma and the cause of the karma. So there are five things. Killing martyrs, killing fathers, killing arahan, injure the Buddha, and break the Sangha into groups. The reason is considered heavy because, because these people on the list, they are considered the virtuous people, the people who are, that we should feel grateful to have them around in their life. They, have, they are virtuous. They are worth worshipping. That is why killing them or harming them uh, is considered anantariyakam or the karma that will bring the immediate result after the person dying.
this is the related to the um, the gravity of the gamma, right? If you throw the stone, the rock, and you throw the bird feathers, the first object and the second object, from the rooftop of your buildings, which one will hit the ground first? Definitely, right? The rock will hit the ground first. You throw them at the same time. You place them on your left hand and right hand. Just throw them. The rock will hit the ground first. Simply because the rock is heavier, much heavier than the bird feather, so it hit the ground first. Same thing, when someone committed the uh, this five action, this gamma will take effect first. No matter how much you make donation, no matter how many times you observe precept, no matter how many hours you meditate before you die, if you break one of this, the consequence of this action will take effect first. The moment that a person die, but the bird feather, even though it's considered light gamma, it's still right. It's it still hit the ground one day. We cannot run away from the the thing that we did. It will hit the ground one day. If not this lifetime, it will following us to the future lifetime. So please be careful of your own action. This is the Buddha give us the warning. So we need to be very careful about it. And in the Buddha time, there are notorious monk called Tevatatta. Okay, he breaks some of this. He hires someone to kill the Buddha. He himself even tried to kill the Buddha as well, and he break the sangha into groups for some reason. And when he died right away, he was sucked by the earth and reborn in a veggie hell. It, he's still there. Okay, so this is uh, even though uh, Tevatatta has been uh, was born in a good family, he he was the cousin of the Buddha. Uh, he meditate very well. He is considered. The advanced meditator, he can do things where the normal monk cannot do. You see, a man with that advanced abilities, psychic power, mind readers, you know, serious ear, serious eye, he can do all that. A piece of cake for him. But with having the wrong view, he wants to be number one. He wants to be in charge of the sangha. So he turns himself against the Buddha. You see, right view and wrong view, it's extremely important. Doesn't matter how much education you have, how much money you have, how much success you have. If you possess the wrong will in you, you will end up suffering sooner or later. So be careful. Okay, so that's the idea of the Anantariya Karma. 